Hey all, welcome to Shatrek. This is Raj here. Friends, uh, today um, I have the pleasure of uh, again uh, having the company of Sandeep and uh, he's going to talk about SoFi today. Uh, so hi Sandeep, thanks for joining us. Hey Raj, hey Shatrek friendos, happy to be here. Let's get going. Yeah, I always look forward to this uh, weekend videos that we uh, record together, Sandeep. It's always a happy banter. And and friends, uh, you uh, you happen to see a, a early 30-minute uh, video, then it became 25, and probably today we may make it in 20 minutes. But to do those 20 minutes, we, we almost spend more than an hour and a half because we have to get it all right, and we have to make it presentable. So we work hard. Uh, I, I really thank Sandeep for not only doing his job at work, but also coming here and giving me time. And also, friends, uh, we have uh, completed 5,000 uh, subscribers. We have crossed 5,000 subscribers. It's a big deal for me. Thanks to each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. And also thanks to Sandeep, who was one of our initial uh, subscribers who kept boosting me because I'm a fellow Canadian. And he had the interest in the same genomics. And also, of course, I'm going to do a separate video to thank each and every one of you, and especially the early ones who might have a personal rapport with, like uh, Jesse Isaacson or Michael Methoff or Josh or Ishkadesh or John Pagakis. So there are plenty. So I don't want to miss any names. I'll have a separate video uh, to mark 5,000. But right now, I am very eager to get started. So let's do that. Let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Uh, I think it's time for me to hand over the baton to Sandeep. And Sandeep, you can take it over. All right. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning to all the Share Trek friendos out there. Today, we're going to talk about SoFi Technologies, which is an online bank, but I want to wish Raj a very, very big congratulations on 5,000 subscribers. I don't know when that 5,000 subscriber video comes out, but please look forward to it and please give this man his uh, congratulations. So let's start talking about SoFi. So SoFi Technologies is a... SoFi Technologies is a bank, a finance company, but it is in that very, very interesting field of fintech. A bunch of other players in this field are companies like PayPal, companies like Square, and this company, SoFi, has experienced quite a beating in recent days and recent weeks and recent months in the stock market, and I want to know why that is. Why is this company experiencing such a significant fall? Yet, recent weeks, it's starting to experience quite a bit of a rise. I did some research, and a lot of people are talking about SoFi Technologies having a significant sum of their income coming from student loans and student loan forgiveness which was granted by the Biden administration recently, really started to impact the stock quite in a positive direction. As you can see here, Biden announced a $9 billion student loan forgiveness plan on October the 4th. And that caused the price to go up and has come down in recent days. Why is that? Why did it come down and why did it appreciate in student loan forgiveness? So I went ahead and took a look at their, I got a bunch of their revenue statements over here. And what I did was I look at their balance sheet and I organized it by percentage of income. We got quite a few things. This company is quite robust for being a bank. They've got a majority of their money coming from commercial loans, a majority of their money and their cash coming from the loan segment. But we see a segment right here called student loans. It has always been a very significant portion of their income. However, it makes up about 21% if we go by their most recent common size balance sheet. By the way, common size and regular 
The difference is common size is organized by percentage and regular is organized by numbers. To simplify things, I opted for the percentage version. Then I have this wonderful breakdown of revenue that I did over here. The company this quarter made about four, uh, $485 million in revenue. And then I went ahead and broke it down by percentages. Their, most of their revenue is coming actually from lending, as we see on their balance sheet. A bunch of them from financial services and technology. A very, very small portion from home loans. Much of it from personal loans. From that personal loan per, uh, segment of their income, 13% is coming from student loans. Now, I think part of that big decrease in student loans is because of the student loan freeze and the student loan for a period of time following the pandemic, you didn't have to pay the interest on your loan and you just got added to the end of the loan. Now that the Biden administration has begun to forgive much of the student loan debt, that money, that forgiveness will go to companies like SoFi, which have clearly a lot of their income coming from student loan forgiveness. But is this going to save the company? And that's something I really would like to explore. So I went ahead and took a look at much of their other ratios. I can see that their cash and free cash is actually been Although they are decreasing their cash burn, cash burn is how much they're burning, how much cash they're using for operations. Although it's decreasing, it's still not positive. They're still using more cash than they have. Their debt is actually increasing. As you can see over here by total debt, it has gone up every single quarter where although their revenue has gone up a tiny bit, it's still not anywhere near their amount of debt and their profitability. They are not a profitable company. If we take a look at some of their valuation ratios, price to book and price to tangible book. Last week, we looked at the difference. Tangible book takes out some of those non-tangible things like goodwill, like patents, their price to book ratio is, looks actually kind of appealing and their price to sale ratios are not as great. To share ratio, PS ratio, price to sales is pretty low, but looking at their PE ratio, it is negative. It's expected the company is going to go positive way down at the end of this year, but not by much. And if you're wondering what these are, I just took the highest ratio in the last 12 months and the lowest and what the average has been. This is what it is today or at the end of that quarter period. Looking at their enterprise value, it is, they have a significant amount of their money coming from debt. And I went ahead also and took a look at their annualized ratios rather than quarter ratios. Taking a look at some of their annual ratios, um, their net revenue is going up. However, it is their margin is still negative, meaning they're still losing money on every single sale. If we were to take a look at this in terms of every dollar they spend, they take home about Eight, they lose 8.9 cents out of every dollar that they spend. And another thing that I really noticed about the SoFi balance sheet, and one thing I noticed and has been a thing of contention with banks and near banks are that the hold to maturity and open for sale issue, which I have broken it down over here using our wonderful board. Oh, you see? So as most of us can see that 
when a company purchases bonds, they purchase something like they will buy $1,000 of a bond. And as the yield of that bond goes up, the price will go down. If we take a look at the 10-year treasury yield, the yield has gone way up throughout the last couple years. As a result, the price of these bonds have come down. One thing that a lot of people are complaining about, which applies to banks, which SoFi is considered an online bank and does not apply to capital companies such as, let's say, uh, Fidelity or BlackRock or one of these capital investment firms. Banks can label their bonds as hold to maturity. What that means is if they are losing money on their bond, they could say, don't worry, we're just going to hold this bond until it expires. And because of that, they don't need to report the losses. I saw that over here on SoFi's little... 10Q filing. They have reported no losses on any of their treasuries, any of their securities, because they claim that, hey, we're just going to hold these to maturity. Whereas if this was a capital company, they did not have to hold that to maturity. And that can cause a lot of issues because they aren't needing to report their losses. They'll just say, we're holding on to it. However, if I was a capital lending firm, I would need to report that as losses. One of the things that I've learned and when I took a look at when I was taking a look at this SoFi stock is the company, although is making money and expected to become profitable at the end of the year, it is losing money at a much more significant rate, a much more significant pace. And... Because of that, and because the company is not profitable, I was thinking, how is this company making money? How is SoFi making money? They are going to have to do a share raise. They're going to have to do a share offering. Else they're going to lose. They're going to run out of money. So I went to Edgar and took a look and found out that the company just in the last month filed one, two, three, four, five, six seven share filings where they're selling shares to Fidelity. They are selling about 340, 334,000 shares to Fidelity for an average of about $9 a share just to raise $3 million to keep the company afloat. And then I went in and counted how many times in the last year this company has done this. About 24 instances in the last year, SoFi has had to go to the shareholders. They have gone to equity rather than debt to try and stay afloat. This company is losing much more money. And the only way it's been able to stay afloat right now is because of share offerings. It's relying on the shareholders. It's relying on folks like you and I who might own the stock to stay afloat because the company is just not efficient enough to decrease their debt or make it up in revenue. Now, one crazy thing happened on Friday, which was JP Morgan Chase, the largest bank in the re world, reported earnings. Their revenue was up 34% in a quarter. And a lot of that was because of borrowings. Now, you and I, Raj, we might, you and I, viewer, we might borrow hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, but some of these big companies borrow millions, billions of dollars, and they could charge much more interest on that because some people, some companies might not be having the same customers, same revenue coming in to stay afloat. They're going to have to borrow more to try and get over this hurdle. Banks are profiting. However, SoFi is not one of those banks that are profiting. It appears to be one of those banks that are borrowing from banks that are profiting to try and stay afloat, to try and make it over that hurdle. The company originally started off as a SPAC, S-P-A-C. And the way these SPACs work are, and 
the way these spacks work are originally there was a man named Chamath Palahapatiya. Part of my pronunciation. It is uh, Chamath Palahapatiya. <laughs> yeah. Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. He made a bunch of these companies and put them out in the stock market. They were just no name number companies. And the, uh, the process of filing and going into the stock market can be long, can be complicated. Sometimes it's better just to find a no name number company that's registered on the NASDAQ and say, okay, let's take this thing over. So SoFi was one of those companies that partnered with Chamath's no name number company and became one of those companies and then it was a shortcut to getting in however it was uh people... it was called uh hedosophia yes yes hedosophia yeah. was the name uh, i had the uh, i had bought sofi shares very early and i was wow. watching the spac launch and everything mm -hmm. and uh yeah i haven't had sofi for a long time but at that time i i had uh, some shares yes, yes that's all i wanted to add i'll go away <laughs> continue please <laughs> so uh, however these often come with a lot of share dilution where originally you'd only put in a bunch of shares and you buy and you get bought a bunch of shares like that. And eventually you put in more shares and more shares. It's a way of pseudo diluting shares because you could only put a few into the market and then bring up more as needed. Arm was, I believe, thinking about doing this. SoFi, I don't know how many shares they brought up to the market originally but they have been diluting shares since then and i just don't have too much faith in the way this company is being run and how much debt and cash burn they have so unfortunately this company does not look too appealing to me at this moment if they were to turn a profit if they were to uh something insane what happened and they were to capitalize on a new revenue stream new way of student loans or something but right now this company doesn't look too appealing to me because of the cash burning because of how many times they've had to go to the shareholders to get more revenue but raj you have owned shares in so far in the past so any thoughts about what we've been uh, talking about yeah i think um as far as I'm concerned. I, I was really uh, shocked to hear uh, the verdict that you have for SoFi because uh, Chamath has been uh, on the circuit. He's kind of a popular figure and he appears on various uh, programs and he has got very clear views on various things. So this being one of his companies, I would have expected that it would be run better. And I think at one point of time, they were courting student loans and they had come up with um, uh, products where you have everything in one. So they were doing very well. I think they also took over a major stadium. It was called SoFi Stadium for a while. I don't know if it is still called SoFi Stadium, but those are the things I remember. And I'm thinking, uh, you said that they are doing equity dilution. Uh, uh, are they releasing the equity into the market or you're saying they're selling it to Fidelity every, every once in a while? Yes. So there are two ways to do equity dilution. One is you find a shareholder or a company which is willing to buy shares kind of on the side of the market. And the other way is to just sell it out into the open market. They are doing more so that they found an investor and say, okay, we'll give you these shares at a somewhat of a discount although it doesn't seem like so much of a discount now, but we'll give you these shares privately on the market and you give us money for these operations. Right. <laughs> yeah, they have to start making profit or else uh, it'll be difficult. And Sandeep, that brings uh, another question to mind. I don't know if you have answer for this. We'll have to find out maybe in the next video. But I recollect that the SVB uh, issue, right? Uh, one of the problems for them is hold to maturity did not happen in that place because some people pulled the trigger. I think it was Peter Thiel, right? He 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 created that uh, mass exodus. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure, but I I kind of recollect that that he was one of those people who said, "No, we need our money. Let's take our money now." And uh, uh, what had happened for SVB, I think, was that as the yields went up, 
the the market value of their uh, treasury bills went down and that was a kind of a book loss it was it was not realized it was just accrued and if mm. they had held it to maturity the company would have been saved but because all the clients started asking for money at the same time they had to start selling uh, and accruing the loss and therefore they lost the value on their balance sheet now what is the situation with uh, sofi uh, you mentioned the same thing that they are losing value on their uh, uh, on their treasury bills holdings yes. uh, so that's also causing a drag on their uh, balance sheet right yes and uh, i have somewhat of an answer on this which i was taking a look at what are the rules of can you turn hold to maturity to up for sale and that is you can only banks can do this where they can turn their hold to maturity securities to open for sale in the open market. However, regular capital companies cannot. So if, if people were to say, Hey, I want my money back. I do a bank run. Perhaps they can turn those hold to maturity securities. They can sell them at a loss to give them their money though that would not be very favorable to SoFi. So if a bank run were to happen for a company like SoFi or a company by um, not one of the big banks, it would be a major issue. And actually, uh, do you mind if I just share one? Yeah, sure, sure, please. I went ahead. We have a thing called uh, CDIC, Canadian Deposit Insurance Corporation here in Canada. In America, it's the FDIC. So FDIC ensures that you got to have a certain amount of capital. And in the event of a collapse of a bank, this um, the, FD, the, C, the FDIC will give you at least part of your money back. According to the FDIC, and this is for SoFi, SoFi, um, they are able to meet their needs right now. However, I'm a little concerned at the number of loans and leases for sale, which are ticking up. And the number of their assets has been pretty steady and not going up as much. So, and their liabilities are going up. So I'm a little concerned about that. They are still meeting their needs, but it's a little concerning if right the situation were to change. Right, right. Did that answer your question, Raj? <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's uh, it's very nice because in our channel, I usually do technical analysis and I just talk about ideas and strategies. So when you bring all this insight into the actual numbers and the balance sheet and the SEC filings, mm. I think it's a really qualitative improvement in our programming. So thanks a lot for that, Sandeep. Uh, so it seems to me that if I had SoFi, I would be a bit concerned and maybe I'll probably sell calls, covered calls, uh, just as an insurance if I wanted to hold it, if I thought that uh, this share will come up in the future. So I could do covered calls and try to reduce my cost of ownership or cost per share. Mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely not uh, dollar cost average. Uh, that's how I am thinking. And uh, if I didn't have SoFi, I would not start a position at this point of time. Mm -hmm. So I, that's how I'm thinking. What are you thinking, Sandeep? Uh, what's your thought? <laughs> My thoughts are SoFi is an interesting company, a fintech company, but in my opinion, there are better options for financials and other better options for fintech. Right. Um, I take a look at PayPal. I take a look at Square and see how they're doing and how their balance sheets are and if they have any capital issues. But the big banks look amazing. They look well capitalized. The smaller banks, I'm concerned about. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks a lot, Sandeep. And uh, it was a very good summary. And I think this time we have done even better than last time. So thank you so much for working hard on getting this all in, within the time schedule. So friends, uh, there you have it. Uh, we had Sandeep with us and he has given us all his uh, inputs on SoFi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll let you know what we are planning to do for the following week. But for this week, this is it. And we'd like to hear your comments. Please put your uh, thoughts and comments in the uh, uh, in, in our comment section so that we get an idea of how we are doing and what are your uh, uh, concepts 
uh, with regard to whatever we discussed here today. Uh, that's very important for us as well. Uh, with that said, I think I would like to um, end this video here. Thanks once again, Sandeep. Bye for now. Congratulations on 5K. See you again. Thank you.